welcome back to the Ottawa Senators franchise rebuild. We're on episode 20 now and the team we're stacked now and this may be our last year as we are going to run into some serious contract issues after this year comes to a close. I mean, we're looking at Brady to Chuck. Do we keep him on the squad? But uh, looking in the comments, Macklegoat was definitely correct. We should have tendered an RFA to Montgomery and Stefan Ferland, but I just wanted to get him on the team. You can't blame me for that. They're two of our best players. But let's see if it comes to bite us in the butt. This may be our last year that we uh, we have the team that we have before we have to do a little bit of retooling here. If we take a look at the contracts here, which is it, our biggest enemy right now, you know, we should make the playoffs. We should be a good team. We have 4.6 mil in cap space. I mean, just looking, our top three players, Stutzla, Montgomery, Stefan Ferlin, all making 11.875 plus million dollars a year, which is, I mean, modern day outrageous. Brent Clark, 9 mil. Bob Huxley's on a really good deal. Langenbrunner, 12 mil. Brady to Chuck, 8 mil. If someone's got to go, I mean, Brady to Chuck's getting a little bit older. I do like him. I want to retire an Ottawa Senator, but we got to make room for players like Phil Pitt, who who wants, let's see, 7 mil for the next two years, which, I mean, it's a big contract, but we're going to have to give it to him. We got Malkin. He's on a pretty good deal too, a pretty big deal here, 5.54 mil for the next three years. Then he's a restricted free agent. But defensively, we're kind of weak, so we definitely got to keep him on the team. Timothy Tarasov. I, I think it's Timothy. Yeah, it's not Timothy. Yeah, Timothy Tarasov. Superstar X Factor, 83, 24 years old, making 2.6. What else? Wesley Garvin, Superstar X Factor. Another one of the guys we just can't get rid of. Shane Pinto, though, for someone, 2.7 mil. We can probably get him for cheaper next year. Yeah, 1.4 for next year. And if we can... Honestly, I would try getting a deal done with him now. Two years of 1.3 mil. I mean, basically going to man that that third, fourth line if possible. But it looks like, yeah, the big the big one for us is going to be signing Phil Pitt and Hindy too. What is Hindy looking like? Oh, trade for asset. Interesting. Don't know why I can't offer him an extension, but that's all right. And then goaltenders. I hope I don't have to sign any of our goalies. We have to sign Bluin, who's going to want a monster contract. Yeah, 8 mil for the next two years. We might have to move on from Bluin and ride with Fed Fedoric. There's going to be some big moves coming to these Ottawa Senators. But let's take a look at our team here. View lines. First line we got. Sorry, let's go edit lines. First line, we got Tim Stutzla, Stefan Ferlin, and Damon Langenbrunner, who had a great last year, but the playoffs kind of disappeared. Off to a, an okay start here, two goals in three games, plus one, six penalty minutes, but last year, 115 points, 68 goals. If he doesn't produce, he's another guy who we might have to trade, just given on, on a $12 million deal. It's pretty, it's a pretty big deal. We got Langdon, Bob Huxley, and Phil Pitt on that second line. Third line, we're rocking Brady to Chuck, Xavier Bouglet, and Timothy Tarasov, all for the plus five, which is a very, very nice uh, morale boost there. The fourth line, Ridley, Greg, Shane Pinto, and Tiny DeMaio. Tiny, I love the guy. Defensively, Brant Clark and Montgomery, Malkin, Hindy, Wesley Garvin, and Santella. You know, we got a weaker core, but Santella should get better as the year goes on. Garvin might get a little bit better. Malkin should get, uh, he should still get better, 22 years old. And then Hindy, who we don't know if we're going to bring back yet. Hopefully he can get a little bit better. We just have a really young team. But let's get into the simulation here. We're listed as a buyer still. Game, so yeah, we, we've played three games so far. We're 2-1-0, we're which is, I mean, not, not crazy. But let's simulate this first game before we uh, we continue. Ottawa versus the New York Rangers in Ottawa. First period here. And we give up four goals as Bluen has a terrible first period. Kako scores. Conan, Odalian, McCammon. But we get one from Tim Stutz. Look, can we have a big second period here, though? This one's not looking good. We're out shooting them 28 to 16. We need a huge power play goal here. Come on, boys. Unable to get it done. Come on. And we give up another one. So yeah, we're going to fall 5-2. to two. 
But I'm going to simulate uh, probably a month, two months, and see how the team's doing and uh, see if we need to make any moves. 27 games in and the Sens, we are having another great year as we are 17, 9, and 1. We're second in the division with 35 points. We'll check out the team stats first here as the Florida Panthers are leading the division in 27 games. They have 40 points, 20 wins, 7 losses. So, I mean, we're not too far behind, only 5 points. Goals 4 per game, we're scoring 4.5 goals per game. Goals against per game, we're actually letting in a decent amount. But I mean, when you're scoring 4.5 goals per game, yeah, you're in a pretty good spot. The power play percentage is 35. Montreal has a super respectful 30%, but 35% for the Ottawa Senators. Two shorthanded goals against, but I mean, when you're 35% the power play, we'll take that. 84% shorthanded. We're tied, or one minus, we're second place in the in the penalty kill percentage in our division here. Five shorthanded goals for, we're great on the road. Not so good at home on home ice though, which is kind of surprising. Uh, let's look at the entire NHL here. So I want to see who has, if anyone's scoring more goals than us. Yeah, we're scoring the most goals by a landslide. We got 0.5 more goals than the next best. Goals against though, again, not one of our, our strong suits this year. And then just power play percentage. Are we leading the league in that? I, I imagine we are. We are Montreal's in second. So, I mean, we are scoring a lot of goals. And we're going to check out the team stats or player stats here and see who it is. And it's Stefan Furlan, who has 41 points in 27 games. Tim Stutzla has 36 in 27. Alangen Bruner, 34 in 27. Bob Huxley's having a good year, 30 and 27. Chuck Montgomery, 26 and 27. Ah, oh, see, Brady to Chuck. The year I think about trading him, and then he produces like this. Ah, oh, what are we going to do with Brady to Chuck? What do you guys think? Brant Clark, 25 assists in 27 games. Phil Pitt, 23 points. Tarasov, 18. Langdon, 15. Bouglet, 14. I mean, just everyone on the team's going tiny to Mayo. Minus eight, four points, but I mean, he's probably barely playing. Sant Santala, just three apples. The goaltending hasn't been too good, but we'll take a look at the standings. 13, 7, 8, 8, 6, 3, 5, 3. I mean, yeah, it's nothing too special in his contract year. I'd like to see a little bit more, but let's go take a look at the entire NHL and see who is leading the league in points. I'm hoping it's Furland. It's not Furland. Wow, it is Wade Downey who has a goal per game, 52 points in 28 games. Ajo's right up there. Debrinkit, Strom, Suzuki, Darius Fletcher, and then T uh, Stefan Ferlin. So we got some ground to catch up here as Downey has 11 more points in one more game than Ferlin. So, I mean, he needs a big game here. Power play points, I imagine it's going to be Downey. It is Downey. Let's see, shorthanded points. Curious. Matt Barzell. Rasmus Anderson, Shane Pinto. So Shane Pinto has been pretty good for us on the on the penalty kill, face off percentage, block shots, takeaways. Any of our guys in here? Stefan Furlan, fifty one takeaways, only sixteen giveaways. I mean, he has a great chance to win the Selkie this year too. But not not too bad, not too bad. Seventeen nine and one. We're gonna simulate here to the trade deadline. See if we need to make any moves. I don't think we will. But let's slow simulate this game versus the Tampa Bay Lightning. Hopefully it's a better first period than the last time we were down 4-1. First period, we get to Ridley Grigg and then another power play marker from Damon Langenbrunner. I mean, that's a specialty. They get one from Ass Plin. Second period, they score three goals. We get one, thankfully, from Stutzel to keep this game close. But I mean, Bluin just has not been good this year. I guess defensively, we're not the greatest this year. So that's not definitely not going to help our, our cause. But they get one from Charlie Coyle, JT Confer, and Braden Point. Let's go into the third period here. Down by one, out shooting the Lightning, 34-22. They get one from Sorelli, but we answer back 30 seconds later. And they get another one from Fajimio. Come on, boys. Down by two goals. We, we need some saves. Come on, Bluin. A huge penalty kill. 
and they get the power play goal. I mean, 0 for 2 in the simulations this episode. I think I got to cut the simulations and just keep keep uh, simulating this way through the calendar. But I'm going to go to the trade deadline. I'll see you guys just before the deadline here, and we'll, we'll reassess the team. And one day before the trade deadline, we're going to pick up the simulation here as we are now 40, 18, and 5, 8, 1, and 1 in our last 10. I mean, I imagine our goals per game went down, but let's see. We are now leading the division, although we played three more games in the Leafs. We are leading the division with 40 wins, 18 losses, 5 overtime losses, 85 points in 63 games. Our goals per game definitely has gone down just a little bit. Toronto's been surging. We're still above the four goals per game, which is, I mean, amazing. Our goals against has also gone down, which is very good to see. Ideally, we want to get that two with three or under three. But, I mean, we can't, we can't be too greedy. Power play slightly goes down, but still 32%. One in three chances we're scoring. Penalty kill percent goes up to 85%. The away record is still sparkling. Home record's gotten better, too. But, you know, a good year so far. Let's check out the entire league. And we are first in the NHL. Love to see that. As we are kind of just doing well everywhere. If we can get a little bit better on home ice, I think... I think the season is almost a guaranteed presence trophy. But looking at the stats, the fan Berlin already has 88 points. Lang and Bruner, only 75 compared to uh, the 88 from, from Ferland. Stutzla is having a great year, 60, uh, 51 assists. Ferland, 61 assists. But Lang and Bruner, for the amount he's making, he scores goals. That's why we pay him. But Bob Huxley, I feel like he can easily just take over that role. His shooting's incredible. But look at the difference. Bob Huxley, 90, 89, 90, 89 shooting. Langenbrunner, 98, 93, 99, 94. So it's kind of one of those things where you kind of, it, it, Langenbrunner's the right guy. He's just getting paid a little bit too much, unfortunately. Chuck Montgomery's still having a great year. Brant Clark's having a good year still. Phil Pitt, what is he up to? Phil Pitt, whoops, accidentally sorted that. Let's go back to points. Phil Pitt. 85 overall so we got to make way we how are we gonna it's gonna be tough i don't think we trade birdie to chuck at the deadline i think if we do move him it'll be at the off season so we can sign phil pitt but he has definitely slowed down in the second half of the, the simulation here looking down shane pinto tiny demayo now has four goals four assists instead of two goals two assists minus 15 minus 17 17 for greg greg I mean, it could be worse. How are Bluin's numbers? They've gotten a lot better since the last time we checked on him. He's now 33 wins, 13 losses, three shootout losses, five overtime losses. The same as shutouts. One assist on the air. Does it not say shutouts? I feel like it says shutouts here. So, oh, that's shutouts, not shootout losses. My bad. He's got three shutouts. I mean, same as Fedoric, though. And Fedoric's only played 16 games. But yeah, Bluin's numbers definitely got a lot better. Let's go check out the entire NHL here. I wonder who's the best goalie. We never really check it. And it looks like, no, we're still on that by wins. Let's go save percentage, minimum games, 20. And it's Jordan Bennington. Let's actually go 30 games for all the real starters. So Vitek Vanacek, Thatcher Demko, Andre Vas Vasilevsky, Curtis McGinn, Lucas Dostal. Where do we got our goalie, Peter? Pierre Blue, and there he is. So, I mean, a pretty respectable year from him. Let's go check out rookie skaters, see who's taking care of the league this year. And it's going to be Muhammad Zhao, 49 points in, in 62 games, a minus 15, though. Pekka Ramo. I don't think we have any rookies ourselves. And then finally, let's check out the all skaters. And Connor McDavid is up to 100 points, dry settle 91. Aho 90, Downey 89. So Downey definitely slowed down a little bit, but I mean, 89 points is still, I mean, incredible. 49 goals. He is leading the league. Connor McDavid and Matthews are right there. Debrinkat, Langenbrunner's top five. So you do love to see that. But let's get into the trade deadline here. I'm not sold that we're going to make a move. I'm not sold that we're going to make a move, but uh, we got to do our due diligence. We only have $4 million. We're definitely buyers. Let's enter the trade deadline, see what's available. I don't want to mess with the team at all. So I probably won't make a move unless I see a defenseman. Dubé, Ehlers, Druin, Heischer, Sorelli, Gensel, Zach Rowinski. 
Noah Hannafin, 11.95. I can't afford that. Earl Civic, Josh Norris, maybe bring him back. Nah, he's up to an 87 overall though, which is just quite impressive. Let's propose a trade. I mean, I'll look at the players in the block, but I don't think we're really going to make a move here. Let's check out, go to defenseman, Thomas Shabbat. I mean, we can bring him back, but I mean, bring him back Thomas Shabbat. Okay, hear me out. It doesn't even really matter if they if they have the cap. Can I bring back Thomas Shabbat? I mean, this would be a big move. Thomas Shabbat, we couldn't get, it would have to be our first. It would have to be something along that, but the salary cap just wouldn't match up. I'm not going to go for Thomas Shabbat. I'm not even going to bother making a trade here, but Seattle makes a trade. Let's see what it is. They get Ryan Evans, Chemilevsky, a six, the Golden Knights for Brent Burns. So Brent Burns, maybe that's not Brent Burns. Maybe that's someone else. Trade summary, any big moves that go down. Do we recognize JT Comfer got traded from Tampa for a fifth? I mean, nothing too crazy. Let's simulate the rest of the year here. I don't want to make any big moves and then mess with the team. We're having a great year here. Let's get to that last game of the regular season. Slow sim it. Well, we got it. We got to end this. Ooh, let's see who this guy is. Got to end this. Get him going 0-2 in the slow sims. But I'm going to decline him. He's terrible. But I'll see you guys at the end of the season for a wrap-up of the regular season here. And this is for first in the division. So it's a pretty big game here. We got the Toronto Maple Leafs. We got to beat them. Doesn't matter if we beat them in regulation or we got to lose an overtime or shootout. So this is for first place in the Atlantic division. First period. And we get on the board first. Thanks to Shane Pinto. Second period. The Maple Leafs, they wake up as they get one from Willie Nee, Costin, and Adam Wagner or Alex Wagner, I believe. So down three to one. I mean, shots are two and one in favor of them. We are terrible on home ice. They get another goal from Austin Matthews. And it looks like we're going to be 0-3 in the slow simulations here. Can we? It doesn't look like it. So we'll end the game there. As the season comes to an end here, let's just do a, a little quick wrap up. And it looks like we do win our division as we're probably going to be playing the Boston Bruins in the playoffs. I mean, no easy feat. It's almost like we want to play Montreal. So kind of wish the, the, the Toronto Maple Leafs passed us there. But the Boston Bruins, they, they you know, they score 3.5 goals per game, land 3.35. So they're a pretty good team. But enough with the Boston Bruins. We get another 50 win season as we go 50, 25, and 7. We beat Toronto by a tiebreaker of regulation plus overtime wins. Four goals per game, 320. So we definitely got a little bit worse at the end of that year. Penalty kills, our power play still above 30%. Penalty kill drops one percentage. I mean, nothing crazy. Just home ice. I mean, maybe we want to lose because we are not good on home ice. Away, we're very good. But that, that's a great season from us. So let's double check to see if we're able to win the President's Trophy. I don't think we did. We kind of slid at the end of the year. It, we did not. The Edmonton Oilers win the, the President's Trophy. 56 wins, 20 losses, 6 OTLs. So they had 11 more points than us. Let's see who's the worst team in the league this year. And it's the Washington Capitals. 24 wins, 48 losses, 10 OT losses. I mean, that's a tough year. That's a tough year, guys. But, I mean, you're not going to win like that. That's not that's not nice. But Stefan Ferlin leads our team with over an assist per game, adds 37 goals as well. Lang and Bruner, 102 points, a good year from him. Tim Stutzla, 98, kind of flustered at the end. But all of our top line above 100 points, essentially. Uh, what do we got next here? Montgomery, 69. So, yeah, Tuchuk really fell off. So to Chuck, I'm definitely thinking of trading on the offseason. Right now, we're going to keep him on the squad for the playoff run, and plus the trade deadline is passed. Phil Pitt, 59. See, I don't want to give Phil Pitt a big contract and him not be productive. Uh, what to do, what to do. Bob Huxley really slowed down at the end as well. Tarasov, Pinto is pretty good. I think he's playing fourth line, so I mean, that's a pretty good season on the fourth line. Wesley Garvin, Malkin, Tiny DeMaio, eight goals. What a year from the kid. Santala, I mean, he's a defensive defenseman, I believe. Yeah, defensive defenseman. Has he grown? He's up to an 81 overall, so not a terrible year from him. Let's check who led the league in points. 
do, 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 do. The entire league, Connor McDavid, Connor McDavid, 132. West, or Wade da- Downey had a great end of the year. Austin Matthews, who took the most shots? Austin Matthews, Matthew, Ter- who's this guy? This guy probably scores a lot. 56 goals, I mean, not not as many as I thought. 60 goals the year before, but he is a pure goal scorer, this guy. But yeah, all this makes sense to me. So we're pl- we are playing the Boston Bruins in round number one. Let's take a quick look at their stats. I want to see who they still have on the Bruins now. The Boston Bruins. Alexander Barkov. I forgot. This is the team with all the former Ottawa Senators who played them last year in the first round too. They got Barkov and then they, they had Shabbat too, of course. So you already know Shabbat's going to come back to bite us in the butt. Barkov always does. Who else? They got Fabian Lysel. I believe they also had another couple of our guys it looks like they got rid of a couple but i think their goalie was our our former backup well now they have philip gusterson before they had another one so yeah they got gusterson and michael di pietro but di pietro looks like he'll be the starter it's gonna be a hard series against them it's gonna be a hard series against them and never is easy when you gotta play your old teammates but i'll see you guys in episode 21 for the sens versus bruins Barkov, Shabbat, Gusterson versus the Sens. Can we come out on top again? We'll see.